hey guys, how do you tell the difference between acne and rosacea? In today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you exactly how to do that. Now, if you're dealing with redness and painful pimples, breakouts, you might think you have acne, but you could actually have rosacea. They look very similar. As I've said before, not everything that looks like acne is acne, and rosacea is pretty darn common. And the reason it's so important to tell the difference and know what you're dealing with is because the approach to treating each condition is very different, and in order to get good control of either condition, you've got to know what it is you are dealing with. When it comes to acne, the signature skin lesion, the spot that is very characteristic of acne is called a comedone, basically a plugged up pore. Now that comedone can have a black spot in it or it can present as a white bump. These are commonly referred to as blackheads and whiteheads, but the medical term for them is open and closed comedones. But with acne, you can also have painful nodules and cysts, and you can have a red bumps that fill with pus, as referred to as pustules. In contrast with rosacea, you can have red spots, you can have pustules, but there are no comedones, no blackheads, no whiteheads. People with rosacea, they can have very prominent pores, but the pores are not clogged. Pore clogging is not a part of rosacea. Both acne and rosacea present with facial redness, but where the redness is located is different in each condition. With acne, the redness tends to be confined around the breakouts, whereas with rosacea, the redness is more widespread, covering the cheeks, the nose, the forehead, the chin. With rosacea, the redness can come and go. With acne, the redness pretty much goes along with the breakout, and it may last long after the breakout has healed. That's referred to as post-acne erythema. Now I have a whole video explaining that and how to get rid of that. So check that video out. And in the beginning with rosacea, the redness actually comes and goes. But with time, if the rosacea is not kept under good control, that redness can persist and be there all the time. Fixed facial redness. Acne affects the skin. Rosacea affects the skin and it often can affect the eyes. This can appear with bloodshot eyes, crusty eyelids, swollen eyelids, dry eyes, and the sensation of like grittiness in the eyes. That is a very important distinction. Over half of people who have rosacea have involvement of their eyes. A trigger for acne is an increase in oil production, and people who have acne often tend to have oily skin. Not 100% of them do, but many of them do, um, because that oiliness really feeds the little bacteria that live in the skin within the pore, and that all leads to inflammation. Rosacea, on the other hand, is not necessarily an oily skin condition. Sure, you may have a genetic tendency towards oiliness along with rosacea, but the oiliness is not playing a role in rosacea. So treatments that address oiliness will not improve the rosacea, whereas treatments that address oiliness can help improve acne. Another distinguishing feature between acne and rosacea is what happens when you do nothing. When you do nothing with acne, the consequence downstream is that it can heal with a scar. And there are a lot of different types of acne scars. I have videos on this channel as to the different types of acne scars, the different treatments for these scars. As a reminder, you can have a raised scar or you can have a depressed scar. Acne can also heal with a dark mark or a red mark, post-acne redness, post-acne hyperpigmentation. Rosacea, on the other hand, left untreated, left uncontrolled, the consequence of that is that the individual can go on to experience persistent facial redness that does not go away. They also can develop prominent dilated blood vessels. And in some cases, although pretty rare, it is also possible to develop skin thickening in the areas involved with the rosacea. This is referred to as phimidus change, often can involve the nose, but it can really affect anywhere on the face where you've got rosacea flares, chin, forehead. In contrast to acne, phimidus change is not a scar. But as you can see, it's important to treat both conditions because there are consequences that are long lasting when the conditions are not appropriately managed. Another distinguishing feature between acne and rosacea are the symptoms. Acne, especially cystic acne, can be very, very painful, but a lot of times acne can also itch. Rosacea, on the other hand, is a skin condition where one of the hallmark findings is the fact that patients are exquisitely sensitive to things that come in contact with the skin, whether that be makeup, sunscreen, perfume, skincare products, other cosmetics. They're also exquisitely sensitive to the sun as well as to wind, 
um, and to just really anything coming in contact with the skin. And this leads to symptoms of burning, stinging, sometimes itch, sometimes discomfort, sometimes a feeling of heat in the skin. When you're asking yourself, is this acne or is this rosacea? Pay attention to the location where you are breaking out. Acne tends to affect the forehead, the cheeks, the nose. It can affect the neck, the upper chest, and the upper back, as well as the shoulders. Whereas rosacea tends to affect the mid face, like the cheeks over the nose, it can also affect the forehead and the chin. It can extend to involve the scalp, and it also can involve the neck, the upper chest, and the upper back. The people who get acne are a little different from the people who get rosacea, although there is some overlap. People who get acne most commonly are in their teens or tweens, but truthfully, you can develop acne at any age, including in a newborn and adults. As a side note, recently I did a whole video on acne in your 40s and above, so check that one out. We explain why you are still breaking out or breaking out for the first time as an adult. Acne affects all races, all skin tones. Rosacea, on the other hand, while it really could occur at any age, generally speaking, it impacts adults 30 years of age and above. Of course, there are exceptions to that, but it generally is a disease that first presents in adulthood. All races can be affected by rosacea. It is generally taught that uh, rosacea is a lot more common in people who have paler skin types. I have always questioned this because I do think that in people who have a deeper skin tone, it's very easy to miss a diagnosis of rosacea because the um, redness of rosacea can be very subtle in a deeper skin tone. So getting a really good history from a patient with a deeper skin tone and always considering rosacea as a possibility is super important. I think a lot of patients who have uh, deeper skin tones might accidentally be misdiagnosed as having acne. If you don't have blackheads and whiteheads and you also have symptoms of exquisite sensitivity, burning, stinging, if you feel as though your eyes are are being impacted. You've got bloodshot eyes, crusty eyelids, a feeling of like something in your eye. You might actually have rosacea. I want to interject why it's so important to distinguish the two accurately because the treatment for one could potentially worsen the other condition. So that's why why an accurate diagnosis is king. Uh, taking a step back, let's let's talk about what causes acne as opposed to what causes rosacea. The causes are different. Both conditions likely have an underlying genetic component. We can always blame our genetics. <laughs> oh, officer, I was going 10 miles over the speed limit because it's my genetics. It's just in my DNA. <laughs> uh, I digress. All right, when it comes to acne, there are a few factors playing a role. Acne is a condition where the sebaceous oil gland plays a major role. As I mentioned earlier, with acne, you have an increase in sebum output. That is largely governed by genetics, again, as well as your hormones. Um, Whereas rosacea, there is no issue going on with the sebaceous oil gland putting out more oil. So there's, you know, that takes that out of the equation. With acne, you also have a problem with the cells lining the pore, not turning over efficiently. They kind of get stuck together. And that's what leads to those comedones, blackheads and whiteheads. With rosacea, that's not what's going on. And with acne, as a consequence of the plugging up of the pore and the increase in sebum, you have another little factor down there in your pore called cutie bacterium acne. That is a part of everyone's skin, but when it's down there in an acne pore in, within that comedone, and with all that extra sebum, it starts snacking on that, breaks it down into something that triggers a lot of inflammation, and that's what leads to painful acne cysts. Think of rosacea, on the other hand, as a problem that is a neuro sensory issue where you have little nerves that go through your skin and for whatever reason in rosacea, the working idea is that the nerves in rosacea release inflammatory mediators aberrantly upon exposure to otherwise innocuous things. That can lead to blood vessel dilation. With rosacea, there's also some degree of local skin immune dysregulation. Now in acne, I mentioned there's a little bacteria that lives on everyone's skin who is kind of to blame for some of the acne symptoms. While that char character, cutie bacterium acne, is not playing a role in rosacea, there is another little critter that likely plays a major role in a lot of people's rosacea, and that is demodex mites. Demodex are part of everyone's 
person's natural skin biology, uh, but it saw that for people who have rosacea, they have an abnormal inflammatory response to that little mite or they have an overabundance of that little mite. So you'll see that some of the treatments for rosacea actually specifically target that part of rosacea, namely ivermectin, topical ivermectin. Sold, uh, the brand name for that is Cilantra. So the root causes of acne and rosacea are much different. And the things that trigger an acne flare are very different from the things that trigger a rosacea flare. With acne, you can get a flare from changes in your hormones. This is especially the case when you have acne as an adult. Uh, adult women with acne breakouts, a lot of it can be uh, influenced by changes in the hormones. The androgen hormones signal to the oil gland to make more oil and that can lead to acne breakouts. With acne, you also have things that you put on your skin can potentially trigger acne flares if they are comedogenic. Now, skincare products are not formulated to be comedogenic. Um, uh, but some sometimes patients find that certain products lead to worsening of acne, aggravate their acne, especially the case with very heavy oily cosmetics or heavy oily hair care products like uh, oily pomades are known to trigger comedones on the forehead or at the sides of the face where the hair touches. Medications and supplements can trigger acne. Certain diets may play a role in someone's tendency to have more stubborn acne. I have a video all about a clear skin diet and foods that researchers believe may play a role in acne, but suffice it to say the full story on how our foods and diets impact an individual's tendency towards acne are not fully elucidated. And acne can have an interesting response to sun exposure. Some people find that their acne actually calms down a bit uh, with sun exposure, but it's clear that acne can get a lot worse after sun exposure, likely because exposure to the sun is immunosuppressive, but you can get this rebound worsening of acne. Now, rosacea, on the other hand, let's unpack the triggers there. Do hormones influence rosacea? They probably do to a certain extent, but there's not that underlying issue of androgen hormones driving oil production and leading to, to flares. So that's specific to acne. Not really, it's not a major driving force, although you may find that your skin is even more sensitive with changes in hormones. For example, changes in hormone profiles around your menstrual cycle may make your skin overall more sensitive, more prone to redness. Skincare products, cosmetics, uh, fragrances, things that come in contact with the skin are are notorious for triggering rosacea. And I always get a lot of questions like what skincare products are off limits for rosacea? A lot of it really is highly variable and very unique to the individual. But in general, things like menthol, fragrance, uh, ingredients that have cinnamon, cinnamaldehyde, these can actually trigger vasodilation and worsen redness. Now, heavy moisturizers in rosacea actually can trigger a flare, much different from how heavy greasy products might aggravate acne by potentially pore clogging. With rosacea, a really, really heavy moisturizer may actually make you feel a little overheated because it might slow down the evaporation of sweat. And as you start to feel overheated, your body's response to that is going to be to flush. And so it can trigger a, a flush, a flare of rosacea with flushing and blushing, which is a hallmark symptom of rosacea upon exposure to things that are irritating to the skin. Rosacea definitely can be triggered by many different foods. I have a video going into detail about different foods that trigger facial redness. If you have rosacea, you absolutely need to watch that video because there are some mechanisms there that I think will be very helpful for you to understand. Spicy foods tend to be a culprit, likely through vasodilation. A lot of people with rosacea are very sensitive to alcohol, it triggers a flush, not everyone, for whatever reason, red wine seems to be more of a culprit for a lot of people, but again, it's very individualized. So just pay attention to how your skin responds when you do consume alcohol and consider om omitting it completely, or perhaps it's a certain type of alcohol that's more of a problem for you. You also have to be careful with consuming hot liquids like hot tea, hot coffee, drinking warm soups, because that warmth can precipitate a flush. Of course, again, this is not true for everyone, but it is a relatively common trigger. In rosacea, you 
you definitely need to be very cognizant of your sun exposure because UV rays definitely are a notorious trigger for a rosacea flare. In general, people with rosacea are more sensitive to heat. That can be from the environment or from sitting next to a heater. Once they start getting overheated and flush, boom, that can trigger trigger a flare. Of course, harsh skincare products, excessive cleansing definitely can aggravate rosacea. Something that is common to both acne and rosacea that a lot of people miss is the fact that both conditions, there is an underlying problem with the skin barrier. And therefore, moisturizing can be beneficial for minimizing symptoms and minimizing flares of both conditions. It's just a matter of choosing a moisturizer that works for your skin and doesn't actually aggravate your skin. So for acne, if you find that certain moisturizers seem to aggravate breakouts, then avoid those and go with something that is more lightweight. Likewise, with rosacea, pick a moisturizer that is more lightweight. It's not going to feel heavy on the skin. It, it's going to, you know, in most cases for people with rosacea, it's best to choose products that are free of fragrance and, and common irritants like certain um, essential oils, for example, because these ingredients, they may actually worsen redness, cause vasodilation and, and precipitate a flare. So go really mild, really boring, really bland. Now that you know a little bit about how these two differ, hopefully these tips in this video arm you with the information that maybe you can begin to distinguish yourself. Why do we treat acne? Why do we treat rosacea? It's important to treat acne because regardless of acne severity, it can go on to lead to permanent it's scarring, which is what we're really trying to prevent. And it also can lead to very stubborn hyperpigmentation and very stubborn redness around the acne breakouts that takes a long time to resolve. The other reason to treat acne is because it has a huge impact on your quality of life. And a lot of people with acne that is untreated um, they have a lot of mental health consequences as a result. So treating your acne could potentially help with your mental health. Research clearly shows that having acne is associated with more symptoms of depression and a lot of acne treatments, once initiated and the acne improves, there is an improvement in the mental health symptoms. So that is another potential benefit. And the other reason to treat acne is uh, treating it early prevents further flares. Treating acne also can help give you some relief from the pain and possible itch of painful acne lesions. Why treat rosacea? It's important to treat rosacea because uh, treating it, especially early, can prevent you going on to have fixed facial redness. Uh, it, it can basically help in preventing it from getting worse. Uh, it can prevent you from going on to develop those prominent dilated blood vessels, telangiectasias. And treating it early can help get you some relief from those uncomfortable symptoms of flushing, blushing, burning, stinging. Treating rosacea is also very beneficial for your overall quality of life and again, your mental health. Both acne and rosacea untreated can impact your quality of life and mental health, which in and of itself is definitely a reason to pursue treatment. The other reason it's important to evaluate and treat rosacea early on is to assess for comorbid eye involvement. Uh, over half of patients with rosacea will have involvement of their eyes. Sometimes the eye involvement comes long before the skin symptoms. And so untreated, the eye involvement can lead to eye problems. Symptoms in the eyes include bloodshot eyes, crusting of the eyelids, swollen eyelids, itchy dry eyes. And if that, those symptoms persist, then that inflammation in the eye can have consequences for your eye health. So evaluating rosacea early on in the course and looking for possible eye involvement and treating and addressing that appropriately through you know, referral, to, referral to an ophthalmologist if necessary. It's really important. Now, I encourage you to see a board certified dermatologist for evaluation and management so that you can not only ensure that you have the right diagnosis, but that you're on the best treatment plan for you. Treating acne, treating rosacea, 
it's not a cookbook approach. Everyone's acne differs, everyone's rosacea differs, and what's going to be an appropriate treatment for one person is simply not going to be right for another person. It, it's not a cookbook approach. You know, you don't take a patient with rosacea and say, if rosacea, then X, Y, and Z. It's not that algorithmic. Um, some things are gonna be better options depending on overall symptoms, skin lesions, severity, all sorts of factors go into, go into picking the best treatment for either acne or rosacea. Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful in laying out how to distinguish acne from rosacea, how they differ, hopefully gave you a clear understanding that the treatment approaches need to be much different and they're tailored to the root causes of both conditions. Now, as I mentioned, I have a video on foods that cause facial redness. I'm going to link that on the end slate. Make sure you watch that if you are dealing with facial redness of any form, including related to rosacea, because you will identify potentially certain foods that may be aggravating it. If you guys enjoyed this video though, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.